Well, hello, good evening, good morning, and every other time in between. We are going to stream for a little while. And let's hope that everything goes quite nice today. Ellie's in the middle of the desert. Hey, Arcane. Long time no see. Oh, um. Just doing some relaxing civilization. The Celts are still spreading out. Yeah, I wanted to do a morning stream since I was having technical difficulties the last few days. So we've got our island built up. All we have to really do is just spread out and connect the resources, get them improved. Get the island developed. And then we can start looking to actually settle the area around our inland freshwater sea. We have the important choke points. We're going to have to supply this fort a good bit with troops. But we're in the late Neolithic, so we don't really need to worry about heavy duty warfare yet. We know people were fighting by this point one another, but large-scale warfare wasn't really a thing until around the Copper Age, when you have things sort of starting to happen around Babylon and the rest of Mesopotamia. Just gonna have them improve. We're still primarily just going to be hunting animals for now. Nothing spectacular really happening yet, but hey. It's just one of those things, kind of have it on in the background, sit back, relax. Put your feet up, take a load off. I don't really need any of these animals that we're getting right now, isn't doing much for us. Though the dog breeder definitely helps out. Pick up our food. Just concentrating on the, uh, Buildings around us, not buildings, but everything around us, get all that up and going. But we do need to pick something for the ancient era as a whole, basically one of the ways. So for Caveman to Cosmos, a way is basically something that 
is unique to a civilization. It's a world wonder, and it's just going to give them a bonus. And you can only really build one of them. Hey there, DJ. I would say we could build up a uh, Way of the Warrior. It's only active during the Ancient Era, so... This is just units building quicker. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the way of the warrior. We'll put it at the end of the queue. I've been alright outside of the internet, not wanting to cooperate the last few days. That's why I didn't really stream when I usually do. Can't really get any use out of this iguana. Our tribal villages are doing quite nice, getting them up. Even though we have a capital, most of these cities aren't really interconnected with one another, they're just loosely cooperating. Now, whenever we uh, upgrade to the government-type city-state, there's a chance that every single one of these cities are just going to break apart and become their own independent entity. It would be still the same civilization type, but politically they're going to be different. And we might have to start fighting amongst ourselves, which will be annoying. But that's also tied to law enforcement, so hopefully we'll have everything we need to keep it together. It's like... Hopefully they don't get attacked by a wild animal. Yeah, Millennium is fun. Well, Millennial. Looks like the Australian civilization has spawned somewhere. Every barbarian city that we see, we have to be very wary of. To make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee. One clover, and a bee. And reverie. The reverie alone will do, if bees are few. Yeah, it definitely can be challenging. So we could build the great bathhouse. But I want the uh, Maui statues. And then afterward, the Maui statue. There's a 
barbarian city right up there. That's interesting. What's the plan? A herd of kangaroos for one of the cities. One of our outposts. Now the Celts are not very far behind us, to be honest. They're going to be entering the basic. They're going to be entering the um, ancient era very soon. Especially now that they got a golden age. But the thing that's really going to be a big deal about them entering the um, about them entering the ancient era is the barbarians will most likely also enter the um, ancient era. Because the how barbarian tech works in Caveman to Cosmos, it's what the majority of the civilizations have. It's how they're going to go down that list. Though with all the emerging civilizations, it might counterbalance it. But the new emerging civilizations technologically are just right on par with the other originals. Get our workers up and running soon. Definitely want to get rid of the uh, little wooden palisade, fortified cave. Basically, we want to get rid of all the uh, fortification out of the auto build list. Got a lot of folklores to upgrade. give ourselves four of them so they'll go and start working. Now we've had gatherers already. 
But our workers are going to be our first permanent actual workforce. Workers will also upgrade so they can improve things quicker, as you've seen already. The gatherers take a little while to actually build up resources. and have our canoes go around and hunt. Keep on that line of promotions. be able to snuff out Honolulu before it actually gets a chance to do anything civilization wise. Looks like there's a barbarian city there. Eventually the other civs are going to start knocking out all of our hunters, but we're still getting a nice good, good, good bit of work out of them. direct the wind, but you can adjust your sails. Now with the sailing vessels. Should be able to start upgrading them.
Man, a lot of these animals outside of the ones that give us like happiness bonuses just don't really do anything for us now. Kind of in that little weird spot. Our work news can't do anything. Why can't you upgrade? Ah, oh, we need a ship, right? Yeah, we need a few other buildings. We are blasting right through the late Neolithic, though. camps. Let's see what Britannia is actually working. A lot of jungle camps around us for right now. But soon I'm going to start having the workers actually start clearing out the jungle. Especially where our farms are. point where uh, animal life doesn't really pose a threat to us outside of like sniping off our workers. Most of our units have enough hunting that they can basically take out all but the most dangerous spawns without issue. In Caveman to Cosmos, the most dangerous spawn that you can run into animal life-wise outside of, like, mythic creatures. Like the Kraken. It's definitely going to be the Man-Eater variants. 
they punch really hard. Some man eaters can be a problem clear up until, like, gunpowder. Like, man eating lions are nasty. All music is folk music. I ain't never heard a horse sing a song. Got all of our production buildings, now it's time to get the, uh, food industries going. It may be slower for growth, but having that ability to produce things quicker just helps so much better. Everything else in the long term. Now at this point we're still hunter-gatherers, but something that is really fairly important. We are seasonal when it comes to our agriculture. And this is just across the uh, globe right now, talking about real-world history right here. But it seems roughly around 10,000 BC. A lot of the areas that would end up coalescing into the first... Basically, um, it's the cradles of civilization. So your major um, river valleys. So you have Mesopotamia, Egypt. You have the Yellow River. The Indus Valley. And... Um, along the Mississippi River, and um, down Mesoamerica. You have the first major civilizations starting to coalesce what would become Egypt, what would become Sumer and Akkad, and all of the uh, really big Mesopotamian And what's driving people together and going into agriculture is, for some reason, around 10,000 BC, a lot of the megafauna that was left on Earth started dying out rapidly. It had already been going on, but mammoths are no longer as wide range as they would used to be. And they're starting to become isolated primarily in Siberia, and they would still be up there roughly around the time when even the Egyptians were active. There were still mammoths in Siberia. And here in North America, they're going to die out really, really quick. Something happened in North America that we're still not 100% sure.
that would cause a regional mass extinction. And whatever it was must have been pretty heavy duty because it also affected us. And yes, Mississi the uh, Mississippi River was one of the cradles of civilization. The Mississippian people just disappeared. Kind of similar thing to the Indus Valley. We say disappeared, they most likely just assimilated and collapsed into minor societies and... For all intents and purposes, it would be considered a disappearance because they were pretty active and then they just weren't. It's kind of like the uh, equivalent if everybody in the United States just stopped. Just stopped what they were doing. Well, I got some cows. A wallaboo. Wallaby. I know there's gonna be an Australian now going like, Did he say wallaboo? It's a wallaby. Those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. Building up everything quite nicely. Mostly a lot of, uh... Jungle camps being around us, but jungle camps are pretty good for right now. Yes, going back into the uh, people's m movements into the uh, regional agriculture practices. Got a food plot. We want to make more of that money.
So another reason that would also bring people into these zones that would become the cradles of civilization. And they were also moving into the Dogger Banks region, but we'll get to that in a little bit. The Ice Age, the last major true Ice Age that we were having, is coming to an end around this time frame. So the environment is starting to change. Animal patterns are starting to become a lot more uh, different than how we would go and move. And instead of following them, we had already started doing very early simple agriculture. So most people weren't really wanting to go and leave those areas, but then you had had like the pure hunter-gatherers that would continue to move, and then you had like the seasonal hunter-gatherers and the seasonal um, agriculturalists, which would stay in those areas. And as the local wildlife became less abundant compared to how it used to be due to the environment not being suitable for them, not having so much of abundant food, they became more and more reliant on agriculture for their food. Some areas, like um, Mesopotamia, judging from Sumerian folklore, most like, and we do actually have proper evidence down in the um, basically down in the Persian Gulf, where a lot of the area where there's a lot of water now was pretty well dry. And it slowly started about 10,000 BC and right up until roughly 6,000 BC, it would completely flood. And those people that were there ended up having to march their way up and resettle in the Mesopotamian region. And it survives in, like, the story of these migrations survive from Mesopotamian folklore. It's also how come a lot of flood myths come from around this time frame, whenever you, like... If you were to go and trace a lot of them back, it comes from this very early time frame. Now, when it comes to some of the great flood myths, it's not from the Mediterranean opening up. That's a common mistake, because the Mediterranean probably opened up somewhere around roughly 20,000 years ago. When it finally managed to punch its way through the uh, Straits of Gibraltar. The currents are pretty strong there and are still actually sort of eroding the area down there. But on the other side of the Mediterranean where the Bosporus Strait is, which is roughly where Istanbul is, where Constantinople and all that would be and later become Istanbul. That area was still disconnected from the Mediterranean. And it's sometime from in between 10,000 BC and up to roughly 5,000 BC where that collapses and floods that entire area. Causing a lot of the people that were in that area to move out really quick.
Dogger Bank is slowly becoming how we see the uh, North Sea today as it starts to advance, as the ice caps melt further. So some areas still aren't the actions of priests, warriors, commoners, and servants are appointed now we have the cap by the system. qualities born of their intrinsic being. Yeah, we're going to actually adapt the cap the uh, cap system. Cuz it's better than tribal for our overall growth. And I forget if that gives us anything else. And we got the Way of the Warrior. Now our military melee based units are going to build a little quicker. And we have Anarchy for five turns. So this is the second real major change, and Persia wants to trade us corn for one of our obsidians. How are they even going to be able to get it to us? That's, that's the real question. Right now it's not going to happen. Because trade works a little bit differently. Like, we could be saying that we're trading these things. And they would probably... They must have sailing and it would come up through the river and then up this way. That has to be the only way because we don't have a land connection to them. So we're now connected to them by this river because this river touches our national our, uh, borders. Which means it would go from in this city and then out. Something that um, Civilization 4, and this is just a limits of Civilization 4 itself, it does have a pretty intricate trade system. It just doesn't really show you unless you like click into the cities themselves and like really look at it. But the easiest way to go and think of it is if you are connected and have the ability to trade on the coastal, as long as you don't have a hostile civilization or they are being blockaded. So if anybody was to blockade this point, we would lose trade with them. So that's basically what's going on there. Trading Obsidian with them wouldn't have been too bad, to be honest. Oh well, maybe next time if they offer. Now, even though we're pushing a lot with our cultural borders, when we get fixed borders, we can lose a lot of this stuff. But it's nice to see that our uh, outposts that we've established are starting to actually build up their defenses. I'm going to start sending warriors over whenever we're done with our current production loop.
let's see. I don't think we need to throw more workers right now. When we get the Maui statues, it's going to make this entire coastal area a lot more production focused for us. Because that just gives us an extra hammer. And since this is a very shallow freshwater sea... This is going to become very production heavy. we get mining proper it's gonna be another boom. consciousness was upon him before he could get out of the way Another invention that is probably one of the most important inventions that happened in the Neolithic. We're not exactly sure when it happened, but it was definitely during the late ne Neolithic. It was the invention of the wheel. The humble wheel. Starting to get upgrades for our workers. And the era of hunting on our islands just about to come to an end.
Man, it would suck if this awoken as a volcano. Because we got Edinburgh down here. We got Edinburgh and... If that awakens and like has an explosive eruption at the same time, it's just gonna end us. Druid traditions have been founded somewhere. Speaking of religion, can we actually... Yep. We can now take advantage of having Christianity because we can now finally convert to Christianity. We have the holy city, so that's extra money. And I think we get a little boost to production, but now that we have uh, Christianity active, our big bonus from the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre is cargo space. So we're going to become a lot better at shipping our units and stuff around. Definitely want to force forward over here. This time we are going to actually take it, get a little bit of corn, something we don't have access to, and they can have one of our extra obsidians. And maybe through trade they'll actually get access to uh, Christianity, which will make our uh, two civilizations grow closer together. your shoulder through the wheel and now we can build better roads Let's keep exploring Thank you. 
snake charmer. Feathers. We're just winning against the animals. <laughs> Man, Peta's gonna see this and just cancel me. Yeah, the Celts have actually appropriately have taken Druidic. Traditions. It was the Celts that actually had, and it most likely originated from Britain. Druid traditions were a lot more heavily practiced in Britain, so it's believed that that's most likely where they originated from. But the Romans have a good bit of accounts of some of the different things that the Celts did before they went to, you know, invaded Britain or even knew that Britain was actually a proper thing. Because up until Julius Caesar, they, like, they, they knew that there was something up there, but it was mostly a lot more myth to them. So we went from mud paths to simple mud and roads. Little dirt roads. Not at all similar are the race of the immortal gods and the race of men who walk upon the earth. Polytheism. Good 
build up some more production. Food production established over here in Red Cliff. Guys are strong. I think this is Carthage up here. the continent starting to get a lot more filled out but right now this is our uh, continent we're gonna be here for a while looking at this landmass it won't change much until we tapes uh, basically take some onagers and go around not onagers, but um, some alligators, and look around. Some killer whales over there. Now we got the Maui statues. Now every coastal tile that we're going to work is going to get a lot more production focused for us. Start building our cottages soon.
good spirit and the maker of all life. A warrior goes to you swift and straight as an arrow shot into the sun. Welcome him. Last of the most. Let him take his place at the council fire of my people. He is Uncas, my son. Tell him to be patient and ask death for speed. For they are all there but one. I think it's good. Last of the Mohicans. I love Last of the Mohicans. Now, the book and the movie are quite different. Like, the same events are covered, it's just the order that they happen in the book and the movie is completely different. Like, the end of the movie is the beginning of the book. The whole middle section where they're fighting around the fort, that happens, at, like, towards the end of the book. It's just... It's just funny how they moved everything around and still have it, like, good. <laughs> Plus, on top of all of that, The Last of the Mohicans take place in a time frame where... It's not widely covered, which is, in the States you would refer to it as the French and Indian War, and in Europe it was the Seven Years War. I know some European countries cover it a little bit more whenever they're going through education. But in the States, the Seven Years' War and basically the colonial conflicts are really glossed over just as a little footnote whenever you start learning into the American Revolution. Even though the conflict played a very, very, very big role. So in the States, the French and Indian War would basically play a massive, massive influence on a lot of the policies that the States would have towards the natives for the next 50 odd years. So basically that first little chunk of America's history, like going into like the early 1800s. Because even though France and Britain would pull out of the overall conflict, the colonial forces were still fighting on and off. Roughly the same forces, though the natives would turn around and like ally with different groups and then kind of come together in different areas. The Iroquois Confederation basically broke apart because of this and started a massive civil war. And the very first 
post-independent major conflict that the states got into was immediately after the uh, revolution was over and we were an independent country and it was against the natives over in Michigan and Ohio and like that whole general area. Something that's not generally taught in American schools, but yeah, we were... We were doing some quite controversial things. But we'll kind of talk about more of that whenever we get into the actual time frame when that happens. They set up a city right next to... That is... It's not good. We need to put a city there, but we gotta wipe that one off the map. And we got ourselves a uh, great prophet, the were drag, the uh, uh, were dragon. Wow, how did I come out of that? Were drag, the were jaguar, which is something from. it's Mayan? It might be Aztec. It's either Aztec or Mayan mythology, and we're just gonna have them start a golden age. strike open the wretched Indian's chest with flint knives and hastily tear out the palpitating heart which, with the blood, they present to the idols. We were just sort of talking about the whole uh, colonial process of the Americas, but the uh, conquest of New Spain and their different volumes is Probably one of the most damaging book to native history to ever come about, but it's also at the same time one of the books that kind of saved some of the mind language so we can actually look at some of the things today and know what we do know about them. So the Spanish Inquisition was heavily, heavily in tune on wiping out native history. And they, a lot of the reason why we don't know a lot about Native American history from the Mesoamericas and like the Incan and stuff is simply because they burnt and destroyed a lot of stuff. And it would survive mostly by word of mouth, which that just try to tell the same story to a group of people and then have them tell that same story exactly the way that it was told to them. It's going to diffuse. So. What survived? and what was around of their language was purely because one of the um, I believe it was the priest I can't remember his name 
had basically written a lot of their symbols and was basically had one of them go and tell them so he could see what they were trying to say and otherwise and determine if it was like heretical and stuff like that it just some awful awful things But even though he had, like, a good bit of it wrong and it was being told from him, there's enough there that we were able to basically decipher and use a good bit of that information. To basically start decoding a lot of Mayan history. Aztec history, just Mesoamerican and some of the South American. Also, going back to the um, Spanish and also the Cradles of Civilization, the Amazon was most likely a Cradle of Civilization because when Spanish went in and went up the river, they talked about cities. They talked about seeing, like, really sophisticated, large cities. It's part of the reason why the myth of El Dorado even existed. And when they went up the first time, they talked about it. They saw these things, they brought it back, did an another, like, I think it was five, ten years later, wanted to do a bigger expedition. They had to go and look at it and be like, oh, you know, let's go and try to see a bit of more of a conquest. And then the Pope drew a line, it's like one side was Portugal, one side was Spain, so it became Portuguese. Because the next expedition would be Portuguese, and what the Spanish saw earlier, the Portuguese didn't see it. And there would be a debate going back and forth. It's like, were the Spanish just, you know, making it up? It was just, oh, look at the famous things that we went and saw. But being that the Spanish fully intended to go back and explore that a little bit more, it stayed around much longer that there was definitely something there. But then you had like the weird uh, conspiracy theory type people go and say, oh, it's one of those lost, you know, ancient super advanced civilizations, blah, blah, you know, just ridiculous stuff. But what's really important to take away from this is the Spanish were right. We've been able to now do radar penetrations of the jungle. And there are cities. There are cities in the Amazon rainforest that have been completely eaten by the jungle. Just getting to them, since the Amazon rainforest has eaten them so much, is something really hard. And there are still native peoples in the Amazon that haven't been properly contacted. And that's most likely their cities. So what most likely happened is when the Spanish first came up the river systems and found these cities and otherwise, just like what happened to most of the natives in North and South America, European diseases. probably wiped out the vast majority of the population and the cities were just like what happened in the Mayans and a lot of Mesoamerica the cities were just abandoned and heavy duty jungle like the Amazon it doesn't take long for it to just overwhelm and reclaim the area
And another thing is when the Brazilians have been doing their great cultural renovation, as I like to refer to it, but when they've started making a lot more agricultural zones and pulling back the Amazon rainforest from what would be essentially plains area. But since the die off of the northern and um, southern megafauna, the jungle had nothing to stop it anymore. But they've been finding remnants of what would be more ancient cities just before they had the massive stone structures. But you can see like where there were definitely something that would have been a city. And when I say cities, they probably wouldn't have been too different from like early, not where we are right now, but like a little bit later on but not too far like it's crazy what's inside of the Amazon rainforest just waiting to be discovered Lost history, lost civilizations. And part of the reason why they're lost just comes down to when... Europe first made heavy-duty contact with the Americas. Building projects are coming along quite nicely. Alrighty, I am back. Sorry about that. Order. 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 
Taking down the food production for our outposts. So I think the first thing that we're actually going to do whenever it comes to like tearing down the fort, the uh, jungle, is we're going to start with the outer coastline and kind of rip it down and where all the wheat sources are. That way we can get our agriculture going. But along the coastline, I want to start putting cottages. This will, one, boost our population and also give us a, a nice little trade base. Because right now we have... Let's hop over to statistics. Not statistics. We have only one city that is not on our list. That's part of the greatest. <laughs> Let's see that we're just shooting heavily above everybody else right now. Demographics, that's what we're looking for. Approval rating, we don't have a very good approval rating apparently. Population, we are number one. We have roughly a population of 4,550 people. So we don't have a big, big population. One thousand people right now is the closest, and the worst is just fifty people. can pass an apple orchard and not remember the stomach ache. <laughs> I'm debating if I want to build another city. I can't build it there, but if I build it here... That'd still be too close. Put it here on the obsidian. Then we'd be able to start working some of these areas that aren't getting worked. Then it's gonna take away from that. Maybe we could have been initially a little closer right there, and that would have... Yeah, too late, we already have them.
right now it's just mostly uh, slide through these turns. I like that they still have brutes, but they also have access to stone proper. It's amusing. The Ethiopians m might legit be uh, concerning whenever they actually develop. They got a nice little agricultural base, a lot of mineral wealth. Sources of prime timber. A lot of rubber. a temporary solution. <laughs> Our cities are growing nice and quick though. Just to straight food production and our outposts. another hunter. Hmm. We've now passed uh, 10,000 BC, so we are getting into... A little closer.
to what is more known. Our cities. Hoping that they'll be able to start working it. Oh, good, these guys are actually finally working that stuff. So it's the administration side. Okay, I, I get it now. So it's the administration line of buildings that allows us to access the things to get like far away. To like the maximum range of the city's effects. So we should be able to work everything on the island. I was starting to worry. <laughs> think they'll be able to work it. Just needs to have that claimed. We might have a little area here where we're not going to be able to work it. They can get it.
because you really don't want to have like your wealth making resources not being worked or your major resources like we're going to be in the copper age soon we need to have that copper source that will be worked especially since it's the only one i have And is there even any more copper in our potential realm? Wow, yeah. Um, Yeah, that's definitely a wow. We're really fortunate that there's actually copper on this island because it's the only copper in this entire area. see any tin there's obsidian marble Looks like it's the only source of tin we have, too. There's a lot of tin in the desert over here and copper. When they grab, like, when they catch up to us. And they're, and they're going to. Spoiler alert, they're going to. This is all going to... When they develop a lot of this, this is going to turn into a massive threat to us. Because they're going to be on par. Easily. I'm pretty sure they have tribalism because the way their borders are expanded looks like it continues onwards. So we haven't had any line of sight for a little while into this area. And we won't know if they have more cities until we actually physically see them. We know the Celts have three because we physically have seen them, but they might have more. We have no idea how many cities that the Persians have because we only see the outline of their border. Crazy stuff here. Anyways, let's finish up mining. Don't need that. And 
we finished our golden age. mountain begins by carrying away small stones. Now the first evidence of proper actual mining does come from the very, very late Neolithic, and this is what eventually would lead into the Copper Age. Now the old ways are best, because I want to look at something before we actually... Let's get some of these national. Let's start grabbing this fun stuff. A lot of buildings in Caveman to Cosmos. One thing I always recommend is to have only the constructible buildings on. Because that's also going to hide the obsolete buildings. Copper spearmen, we're gonna be able to build like a first proper army. But yeah, it looks like we're good to um, go ahead and pick up metals for our currency. So we went from having like no concept of money and now we're basically trading in metals. So it's not quite coinage and otherwise, but it's just like... Metals would lead to coinage. So let me dive into this a little further for you. So let me see what happens with this guy. So let's talk about Yutsi. He is... And we can actually... Have this guy come over here, pick up our two hunters, because the uh, hunters are no longer... The age of hunting is gone on our island. We no longer need it, and we have one of the most important resources available to us, and there's sulfur. That's interesting. That is the remnant of an old volcano. Is this a volcano just sleeping? 
I'm now more worried that this is actually just a volcano in disguise. Because sulfur only spawns around volcanoes. Or where dormant volcanoes went completely extinct. Please don't blow up my city, Mr. Volcano. But we also have iron. So whenever we get out of the Bronze Age, we're pretty well set. Let's see how much iron we actually have around us. Again, not a lot of material resource in that area. Really? Not a lot of iron. That's the only iron source. Like, our little island just has a bunch of... Iron, 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 rubies, sapphires, sulfur. Rubies. Of course, the desert region would have a lot of material resources. Any iron around here? Might have to go back and look to see if there is iron. Oh, we could finally see one of their cities. Neanderthals are still. Which it would be appropriate. Neanderthals were probably around up to 5,000 years ago. In small pockets. Potentially. Finish our anarchy. What do you need? Awaiting your order. Where do we want to drop them? Where does it feel like it'd be best? I'd say down here looks like there's still more animals. Give us a national horse breeder. Llama breeder. That way we can start getting like llama workers. Llama workers are actually pretty important because they can work the mountains without mountaineering. They won't be able to put anything crazy on it, but. Definitely helps.
Just wiping out what's left in the Neanderthals. Gazing, and then we're going to be going into copper working. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. So, going back to material, basically the metals, let's talk about Yutzi. So Yutzi was a man roughly from around this time frame. He's actually in the uh, Copper Age, which is where we're about to be heading into very soon. But it wasn't too different from the Neolithic yet. He's like right at that boundary when Copper first really started showing up. Because he had his uh, Copper Axe. Most likely what Yutsi was doing was he was a, based off the stuff that he had on him, he was most likely a traitor. Not like, oh, I'm going to take something like this and you give me this and you give me that. He was probably going to villages and showing his knowledge on how to we basically m manipulate metals. And that's essentially what would be the big currency outside of like bartering, you know, like I give you this fish for your th um, for your cat or something like that. And then you would haggle and eventually come to an agreement for what you want and he what he wants. Hosp's Eagle. We can make it part of our culture's heritage. Besides that, it doesn't really do much. So we'll bring the hunters that were on our island around for us. get into building the last bit on this.
when we eventually get our units that let us like plant certain types of uh plant resources like your copper no yeah you, you can plant copper like your um uh, don't take that seriously you, you can't actually plant copper but no um planting some wheat around here just to give these some little better might not be a bad idea give them just a little bit more to work with Rid of the folklores for now. And build up more production. Starts with Mountaineer. Does a pack mule have? So this is just an explorer unit. I get it. Because llamas are good for mountain usage. I may have played this a lot, but I don't have a memory of every single thing. So something that's going to be a problem for our civilization, and I've been kind of muddling it in the back of my head for a little bit. If we don't get this area down here, and we're already sort of kind of in a semi-competition for this little spot here, 
but outside of what's on our island and even what's on our island still isn't really a lot we are a mineral poor area we have a lot more um, farmable land but when it comes to like the sheer amount of production that we can do through material wise we're gonna be kinda of lacking luckily we won't have to worry about marauders and stuff coming in since we've already sealed off ourselves successfully so unless barbarians spawn in this area and like plant a city somewhere we shouldn't really have to worry about it that much and our home island is definitely not gonna have to worry about it so whenever we get everything connected up we will be able to start shipping stuff out Standardization as the best that you know today, but which is to be improved tomorrow, you get somewhere. National standard is going to be good. There's a little wonder there. Nothing major. Don't really need the Wombat, or this. Guys, start chopping down the rainforest and spots. Reporting for duty. for that or that.
gives us a little copper. Not copper, but a little production bonus. Uh, no production bonus from doing this, oh well. Actually, let's keep that one because eventually the logging improvement will wipe out the forest. Almost a copper working. Yeah. Build up our mine. dog trainer that would be nice Dog kennels, dire wolf. What's left?
we only have three of them? Or two? Yeah, just three of them. breeder and the rest of this Folklore the Tiger, I didn't think we already... Pretty sure we had that. Just gonna keep these ones hunting. Not gonna be able to for a while. For much longer, there's not a lot of free open water space for animal spawns. So even the freshwater seas hunting days are almost over. And welcome to the Copper Age. The brightest crowns that are worn in heaven have been tried and smelted and polished and glorified through the furnace of tribulation. We're just going to keep these guys on hunt. thing. We're really growing here. Red Shores is growing really quick. Need to get a few workships out here to start improving what's left because we have a nice bonus with every bit of our uh, water resources along with our agriculture now but we're gonna save there and this is gonna be it for today 
as soon as it registers. Let's save this real quick. Now, I'd like to thank you all for uh, coming by and watching. If you liked what you saw, give us a like and subscribe over on YouTube. And if you found this over on YouTube and you want to see any of these episodes live as they're going on, come over here to Twitch and see the live streams as they're going. We'll be seeing you all later, you alligators. Bye-bye.